Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Made with Love mini series. My name is Leah, and I am your moderator. Now, Craftsy, Creative Cake Design, National Sewing Circle, and Creative Crochet Corner have all teamed up to provide a week of live demonstrations and a bundle of five free patterns and recipes perfect for gifting your loved ones on Valentine's Day. Make sure to grab your free patterns by clicking the link in the description. And then once you get to the patterns page, make sure to click the picture of the project it is that you would like to download. Every day this week, we've got a new instructor. We're going to be streaming live as we craft, sew, crochet, bake, and decorate. And you'll be getting step-by-step -step demonstration of all of these adorable Valentine's Day projects. If you have questions during the event, that's what I'm here for. Please leave your comments in the blue chat box below or into the chat on Facebook and YouTube. I'll keep an eye on the comments during the event. I can see that we already have some hellos coming in. Hello, hello to everybody that's joining us. Uh, usually how this works is we go through the demonstration and there's usually time at the end for some more general questions. So you can have a question about today's project or something in general that you just wanna act, ask our instructor today. So whatever it is that's on your mind, you can drop it into the chat box. We love a little crowdsourcing. We love a lot of hellos. So you can go ahead and test that out right now. Maybe let us know where it is that you're viewing from. Now, that being said, it's time to bring on today's instructor. I'm very excited for this one. It's got a little bit of nostalgia in it for me, so I can't wait. Emily Stefan is with us. Hello, Emily. Thank you so much for being here. I can't wait for you to tell us just a little bit about yourself and also intro today's project. What's going on? I, I love that you said it's nostalgic because I feel like it's nostalgic for a lot of maybe people who grew up in the 90s, 80s, the 80s era. So <laughs> today we will be making um, some heart knotted heart bookmarks. They can be translated into bracelets. I even made a bigger one that we can make for like a door hanger, which is really cool with some thicker yarn. Um, the whole idea of this obviously is, I don't know if you were like me as a kid, but I walked around with my friendship bracelets to make for my friends during class when I probably should have been doing math homework. <laughs> and I, I just made them all the time when I was in middle school and high school. And I started teaching my kids how to do this because you know, summer projects, and I pulled out some old embroidery floss, but it was tricky for their little fingers. So we started working with yarn, and this is where like we started making bookmarks and these door hangers and everything. So I'm eager to show you some tips and tricks, even if you are an advanced knotter. I think I have some tips and tricks that I can share. <laughs> Ooh, well, I can't wait to get started. A reminder, if you missed the very top of the hour, I will be here to get your questions to Emily as she demonstrates. Usually there are a couple pauses in the project where I can feed her some questions. But of course, if you have something urgent, I'll jump in and interrupt so we can get to it as quickly as possible. And then of course, some more general questions we'll save for the end if we have time. Uh, that reminder is all I have. So Emily, I'm excited. Let's get going. Awesome. So, okay, as Leah said, if you, have any story of nostalgia about making bracelets, I would love to hear because I feel like even though maybe, you know, all of us 80s girls that were probably nodding or guys too, we're, we, we can connect over that. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, but, okay, so like I said, I brought this stuff out for my kids to make some friendship bracelets or just to kind of, you know, a rainy day board activity a couple summers ago. And I realized that this little embroidery floss that a lot of us usually make stuff out of was too tricky for their little fingers. And I'm sure if you're an embroiderer, embroider person, you know that embroidery floss has like five or six little strands in the big strand. It's too tricky. And I, so I love actually making um, bracelets or making them bigger like this because like I said, they can translate to bookmarks, which my kids love. We're currently reading the Boxcar Children series. So I pulled this one actually out of the page this morning. <laughs> Hopefully you remember where we are. But I wanna show you how to start. I wanna show you the pattern and then just kind of some basics around knotting. So hopefully it'll get your juices flowing and you'll find that this is really fun. <laughs> and I feel like I had a question too, how long do these normally take? And I feel like the really long ones take like a movie, right? So pop in a movie with your kids or with your family or with your girlfriends um, for maybe Galentine's Day this weekend. And you can make these super fast. Like I bet you probably could crank out a couple, maybe two or three during a movie. So that's kind of the timing of all this. But the basics are um, when I'm gonna, I am actually going to show you on this big knotted cord. This is just parachute cord, which is 
quite honestly, I don't know what it's really used for, except for that I feel like we use it for crafting. Um, it's it's a uh, polyester cord, so if you are cutting it, make sure you just burn the end so it doesn't fray. Obviously, anything will work, because I did a friendship bracelet out of the embroidery floss, and then we have yarn, and we have the parachute cord, and I'm just going to demo on that so that you can see a little bit better. But if you ever started, you probably have two different options like this on how to start. And the first one is this sort of easy, just overhand knot. I don't know if you can see that. And that's where you would just take your strings and tie them in an overhand knot. But in a book, it's a bulky knot, right? So the option for making it lay flat is, see how this is flatter or more flat? So when you put it in a book, it doesn't have a bulging you know, it's, it lays flat with the pages, so it's an easy, easy bookmark, um, is to do this sort of like teardrop shape. And that's the kind of first trip, trick I'm going to give you. And the cool thing is, is if you do translate this to a bracelet, to make it into a bracelet is a really easy tie by putting it through one end through this um, teardrop shape. I guess I don't really know what to call it. And then it's a really easy bracelet form that way. So. This is an option. I'm going to show you how to do it, which will also help us learn our knots. So overhand knot is completely fine if you're like, I don't want to do that. That's cool too. But I always tell people more string is better. So if tip, in case you ever need to know, about the tip of your nose to the length of your finger is approximately a yard. So unless you're making like a teeny tiny little bracelet or teeny tiny little bookmark, which maybe you want to, maybe you want to make it into a keychain, um, I would say make each string two yards. So you'll need four strings, two different colors, two strings of each color. So I have two red and two white, and then it's one, two yards, and I cut it, and then I'm folding it in half. And I know that is kind of a lot of string, but you'd rather have excess than have not, not enough. The worst thing in the world that happens is when you're you're nodding and all of a sudden you're like, I am out of one color, this is the worst. <laughs> okay, so to do this teardrop shape, this is the first step. Find your middle, which you would have to do anyway if you were even doing an overhand knot, and just tie one normal big knot and pull everything through. And all this is gonna do is mark your middle, right? It will end up taking it out so it doesn't have to be a super strong knot. I like to use um, clipboards. You 100% could use tape and tape it to your table or your pants. You also could use um, a safety pin too, but I feel like this works really well. So basics of the knot is overhand, or excuse me, forward knot or backward knot. And I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose to use the red actually to start with. So a basic forward knot is easy to remember because you make the number four basics, right? The basic backward knot is a backwards four. <laughs> That's the basics. So forward is a letter, is a number four. Backwards knot is a backwards four. And so all you will do for a forwards knot is make your letter four and then bring your inside into the middle of the four. Now, the thing I think people get tripped up on is you will always hold your other strings that you're not knotting or that you're knotting onto kind of taut or tight. And then I will use my right hand because I'm right-handed and just pu pull up. So to make this beginning part, this loop here, we will alternate forwards knot, backwards knot, forwards knot, backwards knot to make that kind of flat area. So now I just did a forwards knot, so now I will do a backwards knot, which is a backwards four and then pull it through the middle of the four. And it's coming off my clipboard, there we go. So forward knot, whoop, backwards knot. And I don't, I mean, you can kind of eyeball how big you want this to be because if you're putting it over a big doorknob, you'll obviously want more, you know, more space. So what we're doing is from the center, this direction, and then we'll do the other direction. So just know that it'll be in half. And you can kind of see the direction of where the knots are lying. 
So it's just forwards knot, backwards knot, forwards knot, backwards knot. And this is probably enough, I think. I did one, two, three, four, five, eight. Yep. And then I will remove this middle knot because I just marked the center for us and gave us like bulk so that it fit into the clipboard. And then I will do the same thing. So I'll use red again. It doesn't really matter if you're using the exact same string, to be quite honest, because um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can't tell. It's easy kind of to tell because this one is connected to the knot. But I'm starting with backwards because I know I started with forward before. And even if you do the opposite, it's OK. You won't super notice. But again, forwards, backwards, forwards backwards and in um, the instructions that are that you can download it gives a step by step of what the forward knot and backward knot looks like each individually so if you're feeling tripped up by that if I'm going too fast which hopefully I'm not <laughs> um, it'll hopefully show you a little bit more in detail but all it is is a number four and then I'm bringing my string in in the middle of the number four and then it's a backwards number four and bringing your string in the middle so that's probably about good well maybe I need a little bit more because I can't really well maybe let's well I'm gonna do a little bit more this also hey this is just coming to me right now my kids would love this maybe I should make these for my kids for Valentine's Day I feel like backpack flare is a big thing <laughs> for kids so this would be a really cute, like little keychainy backpack, flareish type thing that I think they would really like. Okay, ta-da! So I can just slip a key ring right there. But look at so this is the nice and flat way. See, it's nice and flat versus having this big bulky knot right there. So it's a nice flat way to lay. Okay, so then since this is your middle. Ta-da! Now we can fold it, and then I'm just going to put it right back in here. So, you will want to arrange your strings every other. And if you look at this one, I'm going to show this one just because it's easier to see. This one's easy to see too. The color of my teardrop is, is the color that my heart will be. Does that make sense? The color of what the teardrop is or this teardrop shape is the color of what my heart will be. So because the whole pattern is made up of if a pattern of two. So it goes two chevrons. I'm calling them short chevron rows. I don't know what they're really called. So two chevron rows, two short chevron rows, two chevron rows, two short chevron rows. And chevron is just this shape. So it's coming to this point in the middle of like where, you know, like the point of the heart or the you know, if there's another kind of chevron pattern you can think of in your brain. So it's two chevron, two short chevron, two chevron, two short chevron. It's pretty easy. Because then if you forget where you are, <laughs> you just, it's one thing. It's really easy. So lay out your strings every other. And it doesn't matter what every other is. Um, your teardrop shape will easily be the outside. So then I'm going to go like this. And it will mirror. So this side will mirror this side. So it's a good lesson in symmetry <laughs> for your kids. <laughs> so two chevrons. So the very first is, is a chevron row. And all you have to know is, so I know the backwards knot, forward knot can get a little confusing, but here's how I distinguish it. So if you think about reading a book, right? So this is a bookmark, so think about reading a book. A f reading forward means you're reading left to right. Reading backwards, which you're a genius if you can do that. <laughs> it would be reading right to left because it isn't that you're only doing backwards knots or forwards knot on one side or the other. It's where you want to bring your string. So forwards will go left to right, backwards will go right to left. And visually it makes more sense probably than me explaining. So if you're a visual learner, this is what it looks like. So I will do, to make my chevron pattern, forward knots because I want to go left to right to the middle backward knots because I want to go right to left to the middle. So forward knot onto my first string 
And here is a trick. If you were a knotter, a, a person that knotted or made friendship bracelets in middle school, you knew that if you just knotted one time on the string, it would create a spiral pattern. It wouldn't lay flat. So you have to do two knots onto every string. And if you look really closely, your first knot onto the string is kind of establishing a base and it doesn't really have a direction. But when you knot that second one over top of it, that's what gives you this really nice, um, you know, kind of like etched or up and down little knot. I don't know what to, <laughs> how to call it. I'm sure all the macrameers that are listening are know the term. <laughs> so if you know the term, say so. And then now on this side, I'm taking the same red string, outer red string, and going backwards dots because I want to go right to left, like you would read a book, to the center to meet this string. So everything you do on the left side, you will mirror on the right side. This is why it's a good lesson in symmetry. So one knot. I just did a forward knot, didn't I? See? This is why using big string is awesome with kids because you can take out mistakes super easy. All right, backward knot one, backward knot two. And you'll see if it's backwards or forwards because if I was doing a forward knot, this string would end up over here, but I'm carrying it this way. Backward knot one. Backward knot two. And again, when I'm knotting, I'm holding this string kind of taut in my right hand or my left hand, excuse me, and then my right hand is kind of doing all the work by going up and down. That's what's gonna give you the same amount of tension. If you're a knitter or crocheter, tension is important. So I reach the middle, but to connect my chevron, I need to knot these two that I just knotted or carried together. And once you've done your first row, you'll feel like a champion. Ta-da! So there's our first, always this setup row is tricky, so it's okay if it doesn't look perfectly pointed because it kind of can be a little tricky. So row number one done. We did one chevron row, now we need to do another chevron row. So now I'm taking my white this way and then this white this way. Same thing we just did before. Not twice on each strand. I like the contrast with this red and white. This will be cool. Emily, while you're nodding, yeah. uh, I wanted to point out that Katrina also wants to make these bracelets with her daughter. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as kid-friendly projects go, this is a pretty good one. Lots of lessons here in this so far that I've heard. <laughs> and then also Jennifer is pointing out, Jennifer was a safety clip person. You had pointed out there were different ways to anchor the top or I guess the halfway point. Um, so we have a safety, safety pin person out there. I myself was a clipboard person. <laughs> <laughs> The great thing about safety pins is that you can walk with it. Like you don't have to set it down. Cause I remember walking the halls in middle school and it was like dangling down my pants. It was probably <laughs> not at all sanitary, but I did not care. Cause I just wanted to get that bracelet done, man. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here's the middle knot again to make the chevron point, which like I said, the first row is always kind of a setup row. So this is probably a little bit more clear. So we did our two Chevron rows, one, two. And then next we're gonna do our short chevron rows, which if you're looking at the pattern, it's kind of what creates this, in this instance, the pink to go outwards to make the outer edge of the heart, if that makes sense. So you will take Emily, your... Before you jump oh, into yeah. that next one, we had a question about what you just finished. Yes. Uh, so Cynthia is asking, when you joined the two sides mm -hmm. together, was that with a forward four or a backward four? That's, okay, so that's a really good question because I feel like um, I tend to do a forward. Yes, forward, because forward is my more natural motion. I was watching my sister-in-law the other day because we were making these while watching some movies 
a couple weekends ago, she's left-handed, backwards knots are more comfortable for her. So it, I don't think it matters at all as long as it's the same two knots. Because if you were to do a backwards on top of a forwards, maybe it wouldn't matter because it's the same color. Um, but as long as it lays completely flat, so I would just choose whichever direction in the middle and it doesn't super matter. I tend to always do forwards because I'm right-handed. But maybe that maybe it's just a preference. I'm actually not right, quite sure. <laughs> That's a good question because it doesn't matter. It, I don't think it matters. If you're using different colors of yarn, it would matter, but in this instance, it doesn't. All right, thank you. Yes, okay. So I'm gonna take my two strings that are second from the inside, and these are my two strings I'm gonna start with. This is why it's a short chevron. So I'm going to take this and move it this way and this and move it this way. So I will be doing a backwards knot because I wanna go backwards with this and a forwards knot because I wanna go forwards with this. And it ends up on up outside. So two backwards knots. One. Two, and see how it brought my string to lay on the outside. And then I'll do the same thing for this but I will do forwards knots because I want it to go this way. So again, think about reading a book and where you want your, ta-da, can you see? So this is now becoming the outside of the heart shape. So then to finish the row, I have to take the next strings and bring them inward. So this is kind of why it's a short chevron because you're setting up to make this short. So two knots forward because I'm going this direction. The cool thing I think about as I'm seeing this heart form is that I feel like um, bracelets and designs and bracelets can look so different depending on the colors that you use and I'm going to show you why in a second. Okay, so two backwards knots. And then, this is maybe gonna answer my question. Yeah, I always do forwards knots in the middle. You know, sometimes you do something and you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> That's what mm -hmm. I feel like that question was. Okay, so, so this now created the inside part of the heart, the yellow part, right? This is the inside. So we just did one short chevron row. Now we need to do that again. So again, I will take two or the second from the outside go this way and go this way. So this is backwards to go this direction. One, two, whoops. And then forwards because I want to go this way. I want to read from left to right. One, and you can probably tell that I'm kind of pulling this cord tight because it's kind of thick. And, then and what finish. cord is that again, Emily? We it's, have uh, Kathleen wondering what it is. It's called parachute cord. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know why. If it's used for like, you know, parachuting or something, it's. But all it is is like a polyester um, braided cord. You probably, honestly, could use cotton macrame cord. You could. I mean, we used yarn. You can use um, anything you find, really. So maybe raid your closets. <laughs> and I've always wanted to, I've never done this, so maybe this will inspire me to do this. I've always wanted to get some cotton cord and actually dye it and then make some bracelets with it. Because I think that could be really cool. I feel like um, at camp, this parachute cord was used to make this part of the macrame bracelets that you would wear and then you'd um, burn them together. I don't know if anybody did that. <laughs> and it was like on your arm forever and ever to remember camp by. <laughs> All right, so that's the second um, short chevron row. And then now we'll do, do two regular chevron rows. So just take your outside, go inward, and not towards the middle, just like how we started. And you'll start to see how this is now forming the outside of the heart. It feels really complicated, but if you remember two chevron, two short chevron, two chevron, two short chevron, that's all you have to remember for the pattern. 
OK. And fun fact, in case you want to look on the archives of my blog, I actually made a friendship bracelet costume <laughs> one time in my life. <laughs> this is how much I love this. It was made out of like polyfill stuffed tubes. <laughs> so it was really thick. It was great. The biggest friendship bracelet ever. <laughs> Probably. You should have called up uh, Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> what was I thinking? OK, then I'm going to knot these two together. So you see, they kind of look like beans, <laughs> the shape. But look at that. So then the second chevron row will essentially be the same as this setup row. So the second chevron, again, this is going pretty quick. And if you're using, obviously, smaller embroidery floss or something, or even like thread, um, you, it, won't, it won't go this fast to to finish your entire bracelet, but it will go this fast to finish one of the heart patterns. It will just take more heart patterns on your bracelet or on your bookmark to make it long. There we go. So I feel like there's probably a million different things you could use this pattern for or on. So if anybody has any ideas, I love these live events because I feel like we're a mini community <laughs> that just gives each other lots of ideas or tips and tricks, and it's probably my favorite part. Now, Maria Elena has a question here. Is yeah. it possible to use yarn for this? Yes. OK, so this is what this is right here. So the reason. Yes. Um, at the top of the hour, I was explaining that how we even started using yarn is I wanted to teach my kids how to do friendship bracelets, but this really, really thin stuff is just tricky for their fingers, and it was hard for me to explain and for them to see what was happening. So I was like, okay, 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 we're going to start with yarn, and then we made so many of them, I'm like, all right, we're going to use these as bookmarks. So that's kind of how this was born in our house. And actually, if you want to see yarn, I can finish a little bit more of this, too. So uh, well, we do have another yeah. question that's coming in about the difference between your two pattern options. Mm -hmm. So Kathleen is curious um, about the difference between the chevron versus the short chevron row. And mm -hmm. can you explain that difference again? Yes. OK, so the sh full chevron row means I just did that one. So it means I'm taking my outside, my two outside, because remember it's symmetrical, we're doing the same thing on the left side that we're doing on the right side. You're taking your two outside yarns or pieces of string and bringing them inside. The short chevron means you start by taking, which is what I'll do next, this is the next row I need to do, by taking the two strings that are one from the outside or second from the outside and bringing them outside first. So it kind of creates only this little shorter chevron because you're bringing these outside first. Maybe short chevron isn't the right words, but it's not as lo long lengthwise. So I will do my backwards knots here to bring this to the outside. It's kind of like a setup to the chevron. And this lays flat. You will know kind of where your strings need to go by where it needs to lay. Like if I were to try and pull my string in here, you kind of can't really tell, but it won't lay flat. Like your string will go where the string is supposed to go if it's knotted correctly. So then this one, forward knots, because I want to bring it this direction. So then it becomes a short chevron because I'm taking these two strings that haven't been done anything with or haven't done anything, and then I'm bringing them to the middle like I would a chevron row, but it's, sh it's one string shorter because I had to move these ones outside. And that's what creates the, the bump or the outside of the heart. So then now this becomes the little short chevron because it's smaller in number or less knots because you're taking, you took that string away. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, I'll keep an eye and see if any other okay. questions drop in, but thank you for yes. revisiting that. Yes. 
And I think the cool thing that I feel like I've discovered about friendship bracelets is kind of exactly what we were saying of like, you can actually not, as long as the knot will stay out of any material. Like I have often wondered like, can I do this with fabric, like strips of fabric? And I bet you could. And this just happens to be cord because it's easy to see. See, so then that's the short chevron row because it's shorter than all of the other long ones. So then a second short chevron row would be again, take the, start with these two, bring them out. See, this is exactly what I was saying. This little guy is really short. <laughs> that's why it's always good to have more string and <laughs> less. So if you're feeling like you're cutting your string too long, you never are. Now, Emily, do you have a solve for if you get a certain way in and discover your string is too short? You know, okay, so I bet I was actually thinking about that. With this parachute cord, I bet you could, because um, it's polyester, it's basically like a plastic, I bet you could burn, you know, like to try and put, put two pieces together, but you could burn them together with a lighter and burn them together. I mean, honestly, you probably can just knot an extra piece of string on there. You would just have to maybe try and make it so that the knot would fall, um, the knot of the two strings together would maybe fall inside of a knot so that it's not like this weird kind of clumpy, um, you know, like bulky extra piece. But I don't, I've, I've actually just tr been like, you know what, okay, it's too short. I'll either make it into a keychain or an earring. Friendship bracelet Ooh. earrings are really fun. Yeah, how fun would this, I mean, maybe not this size, but <laughs> <laughs> how fun, <laughs> that'd be a cute earring or like a, you know, a keychain-y sort of backpack pull. Um, I just, I tend to always just start over because the thing too to remember is that if you're wearing it as a bracelet or using it for something, um, that area that you've joined extra string on could potentially be weaker. So like when my kids and I make friendship bracelets, I feel like they get worn until they fall apart. <laughs> like they're in the bathtub with them and they're in the hot tub and all the things. So they get gross and then we just take them off and start over again and make something else. So it could be that they maybe break faster if you're putting your two strings together. I don't know, maybe if anybody else feels like they have an answer for that. I'm all ears because I would love to know. <laughs> <laughs> and then one final question to make sure we're covering everything. Um, that center knot that you just finished yes. after you finished your row, that's just a regular knot in the center, yes. correct? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was um, one of the questions before is, does it need to be backwards or forwards? And I don't think it needs, needs to be either as long as you do the same. So as long as you do forward, forward or backwards, backwards, because remember mm -hmm. you're knotting two times on each string and you wanna make sure it's just the same two knots on that string, on that center string. And you'll notice, I feel like the cool thing with friendship bracelets is you can probably kind of see, and you can see with this as well, you see that all of your friendship bracelet finished knots are all kind of like an up and down check or an up and down line. So for some reason you've done something wrong and it looks twisted, like here, here's a good example right here. I was making this and I looked back up here and this part right here, do you see how everything is laying really flat? And this is like bulky and weird and twisted. I think it's because I did a forward knot underneath and then a backwards knot. So it's not necessarily wrong on top. It still moved my string where I needed it to move, but it is, it's twisted and it doesn't even, you can see it even bulges out right here because I think I did it wrong. I didn't catch that until it was way down here. And maybe some people would take it out, but I was like, no, no, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> My daughter still liked it. She didn't care. <laughs> so <laughs> there is a level of crafting. I feel like that sometimes you're like, well, is the mistake worth it to take out? I'm sure that's like a life, some meaning of life of like, it's okay to make mistakes and just embrace it and live with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, one of our, I believe it was one of our knitting instructors uh, mentioned one time, Emily, that any mistake that is in a piece makes it unique. Yes. Oh, 100%. So no one else has a piece with that yes. specific 
slip stitch in it. <laughs> that is true. That is, that's a really good way to look at it. When my mom crafted a ton when I was a kid, which is of course what inspired a lot of my making. And my dad, she, you know, she'd get upset like, oh, I sewed something wrong or whatever. And my dad would always be like, you can't see it from the road. It's fine. <laughs> so that was his like, like, is it bad? You can't see it from the road. Uh, can't see this from the road. <laughs> Okay, so this is in this is the same thing over and over. Two chevrons, two short chevrons, two chevrons, two short chevrons. And the written out instructions for exactly forward, exactly backward is all on that download. But the easy way to think about it is like I said before, if you're reading and you're reading left to right would be forward, reading right to left would be backwards. So you just have to remember where you want your string to go. So this way or this way where you go out first and then in so if that if that it's confusing at all let me know and i can help answer more questions but that's the same thing over and over again and we have this right so this is where it's completely flat see how flat that is and it can go inside of a bookmark or can be a hang tag on something earrings you can make earrings out of this i have um this goes I made it for my daughter for her door. It, goes, it slips on her door. And I thought here, hey, it could be really cool to add some pom-poms to the end. So I'm gonna do that quick. <laughs> so if anybody Emily, has I can questions. always count on you to bring in some pom-poms. I, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never done this. This is a little bit of a like, you know, let's just see if it works moment, which is I'm okay with. All right, well, well, you're prepping that. We did have, um, going back to tying in a little bit of knitting with this, Jennifer wants to know if the magic knot would work to join yarn, how we were talking about yes. if you run out. What do you think? Yes, that's a, that, I love knitters for that very reason. I um, pretend to be a knitter. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm actually a real knitter because I, yes, I feel like you could. Because for those of you that don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, a magic knot is a way that you like, it's like a square knot where you, correct me if I'm wrong, you go like right side over, left side over, and then right side under, left side under. So it creates like this like, <laughs> I'm doing a really bad job explaining this, like this loopy, and you can cut your strings really, really, um, short on the edges because you know sometimes you tie a knot and you pull it and then the knot comes out and so of course you're like i'll let it a hundred times to make sure it doesn't come out well the magic knot is a way to loop it together but be able to cut your strings really short is that probably the right definition correct me <laughs> if i'm wrong but that would be a good way because then you wouldn't have the bulk of a knot in the middle of your um yeah in the middle it's a great idea actually um, so I know that you're adding some pom-poms here, but yeah. Robin is curious how we, you go about finishing the bracelet. Oh. Do we have a couple steps left? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Let me show you. I got two ahead of myself here. <laughs> I left this other bracelet undone so I could show you that. Finish tying my pom-pom first because what person does not want some pom-poms on the end here? Look at this little hang on your door, little pom pom -y moment. That's cute. Okay, so I actually didn't finish this one so that you could see the finishing. So if I decided, oh my word, okay, I only wanna do two little hearts and I'm gonna make this into a backpack tag. So as you can see with this, I think the important part, if you're gonna make this a bracelet, if you're not gonna make this a bracelet, this is maybe a little bit less important, but still a really good way where it remains flat to lay in a book to finish off um, the pattern. So I would, I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter just cause they're super de duper long. So I'm gonna cut them just a little bit shorter and I'm going to braid. So because it naturally lays that there's two separate sides or sections because of the chevron pattern we did, I'm gonna braid these two sections. So I know that there's four. And for those of you that know how to braid four strings, this is where you can shine. This is your moment to shine. I still, for the life of me, cannot figure it out. So <laughs> I'm just taking two strings as one and just doing a really, that's backwards to me, um, just doing a really quick braid so that it kind of finishes it off. Where, here we go. And 
when you're making this into a bookmark, this is what I tend to do, and perhaps you want to maybe measure on your book. I will braid so that this knot comes out the bottom of a book. This is for a shorter book here. This is probably for like more of a book size where the knot would come out the bottom kind of like this because this is the only bulky part you will have if you've done your teardrop beginning so that it won't kind of like maybe bend your pages or dent your pages. So maybe just have a book nearby. This is a good size. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts. And our book, this is for our boxcar children book, like I said, our book ends about here and then this there's like a little bit that sticks out the top so it lays nice and flat in there pretty darn flat and then these knots so you can make these tails I mean really long if you really wanted to and the reason I do two is because if you I want to show this again if you wanted to loop them into a bracelet you can slide one of them into the heart and then tie it on your wrist really easily and you can take it off really easily too if you want to. So I just do a quick braid, braid, and then it ends up with these two kind of ends. Now if you're doing something thick like this, these won't be able to be braided. So I also know when the cord is really this thick, these knots aren't coming out. So I didn't need to braid the end. That's why I left these kind of long. And to keep it kind of hanging is, you know, kind of cute too. So it'll, you know, hang on the door with the little fringes and then the palms at the bottom. So I think it maybe depends a little bit on the um, material you're using, but I would braid and then only if it's too thick, do something like this. Yeah, pretty straightforward, I think. All right. So all you did for the pom-pom was just sew it onto the end of your mm -hmm. piece, right? Nothing yep. too fancy? Yep. So all I did was use a, this is a, just like a sharper darning needle. Although darning needles, I think, are really dull, but a sharper needle, like an embroidery needle, and went through the middle. Now, if you're making a pom-pom, don't cut um, your middle two strings and you won't have to do this. Like if you have, none of these have them because I'm sure they were cut for some reason or another. But all I'm doing is sewing it and putting it through the cord because it's kind of a thick cord. So putting it through the cord and then just tying the pom-pom on. And now, Emily, what do you think about uh, putting some beads or something yes. fancy at the bottom? Oh, my gosh. You could customize this to your heart's content. You could get letter beads and put, you know, your Valentine's Ooh. name down it. Or you could, yes, absolutely. Because this, this string, um, this size of string, let me say that, not necessarily parachute cord because parachute cord is polyester, but this size of string is used in macrame. And so, you know, like wooden beads, if you have like a plant hanger that's a macrame plant hanger, Wooden beads mm -hmm. are constantly used and really cute with those too, if I might add. But you There's easily... a request in here to teach some more macrame, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know that I'm really good at it. <laughs> That's okay, we can learn together. <laughs> but this is, I feel like you could personalize these, personalize these to your heart's content. And if you are gonna use these, let's say as a backpack pull, what a cute way to put like your kids' names or your best friend's name and then it goes on their backpack and it's like kind of a name tag or if, if this, you know, this is your door hanger, a name of something or somebody. I mean, you can make anything into a Valentine, I feel like, or a Galentine. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just gonna put this last pom-pom on and then I'm done with this guy. All right, I guess that's time for me then to say if there are any last minute questions here for Emily, since we're getting close to the end, this is the time to drop them into the chat box. Uh, this has been a really fun one. Uh, again, even if it's not a question, if you just want to chime in, this is the time to do so uh, before Emily has to say farewell for the day. There we go. I mean, I feel like this is joy on a doorknob. <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> So I feel, and here's the thing, like I know I said this before, but you can use any material. So if you look in your closet right now and you're like, oh my gosh, all I have is yarn. It doesn't even have to be pink yarn. Just use whatever yarn you have and go ahead and start making. And like I said, the reason that some of the times this bigger material is more fun is for little fingers. If you're teaching kids or your neighbor, or even if you've never knotted before and you wanna try it out for the first time, yarn is your friend. There's cotton, there's polyester, there's tons of different things you can use as long as you have 
two different colors that are the same weight and that you have probably at least four yards of each color and you're all set to go. All right, well, we haven't gotten any more questions, Emily, but we have a few thank yous. So yeah. it does seem like people really enjoying this, really excited to take this to their kids uh, and share this, teach it, pass it along. So this is gonna be fantastic. Uh, I will give you the floor for just one moment of final thoughts. And then I've got a few reminders for everybody before we have to say goodbye. So Emily, you first. Well, I hope that this has inspired you or reignited <laughs> maybe your macrame or knotting or friendship bracelet days because I feel like I've experienced that when I pull kind of out these fun, really easy, fairly easy things to do, it is so inspirational, it's so fun, and it, you feel so accomplished when you finish a little bracelet or something for somebody. And I'm telling you, teaching your kids this is so fun because it's those little moments of like, you know, you put a movie in, you break out the string and you just have a night to craft together. And it's really fun and really connecting. So I hope this inspires you to grab your kids or your family or even your girlfriends and get together and craft because it's an easy project that I hope is igniting the fun. <laughs> All right, and I did lie just a little bit. We got one final question that yeah. I wanna throw your way. Uh, it's a good one to finish on too, Emily. So Robin wants to know if you have any resources you can point our viewers to for bracelets for beginners. Yes, okay, so the very easiest bracelet that you can make is called a candy stripe bracelet. So if you Google that, there's, um, I wanna say, the website is called Bracelet Book, and of course, do not be alarmed when you go on the site because there's like somebody's making baby Yoda in a bracelet. I mean, it is like real detailed, but it will probably give you, because that is like the main website that I feel like everything is on. Um, and the candy stripe pattern, all it is, is like we did our chevron, right? Where we went from left to right. It'll be left to right across the whole entire bracelet, left to right across the whole entire bracelet. And that's the basic, because it'll be forward knot the whole time, really easy it's really fun to play with colors depending on how you you know layer the colors or make it your first string and then your second string um, that's the basic it's called candy stripe and that will give you confidence <laughs> if you're feeling like this is overwhelming because i know doing two different kinds of knots can be a little overwhelming but that will give you confidence to say oh my word i know how to do this i can do my forward knots and then you can graduate into hearts <laughs> or chevrons or something but it's basic and it's awesome so google that and that will give you the basics of it awesome thank you for yes. giving us that starting point i think we have a lot of people that are going to be interested in starting some bracelet making here after today's event uh, so i have to say thank you to emily and then like i promised a few reminders from me so first of all please remember to come back tomorrow continuing our made with love mini series we've got brenda kb anderson and the start time for this is 11 a.m central so again that's 11 a.m central with brenda kb anderson and you'll be getting a live demo on how to crochet the big hearted scarf pattern. You can go ahead and download that free pattern right now using the link in the description. So you're ready for tomorrow's event. And you can also find the entire mini series schedule in the video description as well. So thank you so much for joining us again today on behalf of Emily and the entire team. My name is Leah. Thank you. And we will see you tomorrow.